Stephen, good morning to you. Thanks very much for taking time uh, in speaking to us. We'll talk about the expansion into Africa. The French president uh, saying that there are plans as a possible uh, agreement uh, between uh, the French government and South Africa, which you can elaborate on. Before we get to that, can we please talk about uh, the vaccination plant in Quebec and the J&J &J vaccination and the FDA approval? Where are we on that? Good morning. Good morning. My understanding, you know, this is a regulatory regulatory issue. We we are waiting the FDA approval. Apparently, the inspection of the American facility that made the active ingredient uh, was yesterday. Um, and I heard the minister and the SAPRA saying that those answers will be received by Friday. Um, I think where we are, the, the sad part is we're sitting with uh, with a couple of million. Um, vaccines in our fridges, literally in the fridges in Quebec, and we need no other approval except confirmation from the FDA. Once that's received, that product, those products are available for sale immediately. Uh, and, and uh, you know, as I said, there's over two million vaccines just sitting there waiting. Mm. What is, uh, Stephen, if I can ask, I, I know we, uh, it's not going to become a medical discussion, obviously, but what is the actual issue? Uh, that the FDA are trying to get this approval on. Can you explain that to me? Uh, speak, Gareth, to me for a moment. Sure. So if you look at how a product is registered, the FDA registered the product, and Europe, Canada, and South Africa registered their product based on what the FDA, on the FDA registration. So if there's a problem with what the FDA say, there's a problem for South Africa. That we, normally we would say, okay, Aspen, your product, test it, and it's fine. So uh, the, the issue really was that there was a risk that one batch got mixed up with an AstraZeneca. There was some con contamination, potential mm -hmm. contamination for a period. And it's to try and, one, identify which batches, why there was a contamination. And so they're busy going through that process. But, you know, we've sort of, it's five weeks later now. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're having their closeout interview on um, uh, because as I said it was yesterday. So we're hoping to hear that either all the batches are, are fine, some are fine. Um, you know, we've done our tests on our batches, we, we, and, and so we just sit and wait now for that approval. Uh, I know we're going to talk about Africa in a moment. Just before I move away from what's happening in Quebec, uh, if the FDA approves this batch as is, this over 2 million doses that you're talking about, once those doors open and trucks start rolling out, how quickly can that happen once the FDA gives you the stamp of approval, Stephen? It's absolutely immediate. We, <clears throat> we need no other regulatory approvals. We... The products are being tested, they've been they media fills, they're sterile, they're literally ready to go. As we get that approval, the truck will roll out and those vials will be, uh, and, and, and doses will be on an aeroplane. To where, Stephen? Is this going to be for South Africa or are we selling these overseas? For South Africa. No, no, no. This is, that's, those two million are only for South Africa. So this would be for South Africa. Okay. When you said aeroplane, I thought, oh dear, we're going to lose our vaccines, aren't we? All right. Let's talk about aeroplanes, though. We are going to need those, <laughs> aren't we? Uh, we're going to need aeroplanes, uh, I'm sure, as uh, you're going to tell me about the expansion plans into Africa. Two percent, very worrying. But uh, the French president, uh, Emmanuel Macron, has decided that uh, you could be one of the partners uh, to change everything in Africa. Uh, tell me about that potential agreement and partnership. I know it's early days, yeah. but what is that about? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a really big commitment, and it's a really big, uh, it, it, it's really necessary. You know, we talk about we're not safe till we're all safe, and it's what I said to President Macron and President Ramaphosa, but we we talk about that globally, but we really, we want to say, but we all want to be safe at the same time. And Africa really is at the back of the queue. We import 99% of our vaccines. And, you know, I, I said to them, we don't want aid, we don't want funding, we don't want begging bowls. We want to capacitate ourselves. We need to look after ourselves. To do that, we, we need to create our own capacities. And Aspen can create that pretty quickly, both in South Africa. And, you know, we've got plants across much of the rest of Africa. But South Africa, we've already got the spaces. We've got another line in place. And we've got another line coming in less than a year. So we can really ramp up our capacities. 
what was really important for us in this was some type of tech transfer. You know, there's many different vaccines and Europe has an mRNA capability, which is what sort of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine looks like. And, and we're saying, listen, if you're really serious about wanting to assist Africa, mm. then we'd like to see some type of technology. First. And this is what he committed to. And he actually did mention Aspen specifically. You know, we've got other vaccine manufacturers across Africa, but the reality is they're all pretty small at the moment yeah. or don't or might not pass the requisite uh, controls or regulatory controls. So we're in a really good position to ramp up our capability. We said we want to get our capabilities to one person, one African, one vaccine. Mm. Uh, and we really want to be part of the solution for Africa. We're well positioned. We've got what it takes and we've got capabilities and capacity. So I think we, we really should, as a company, we, we are committed to assisting here and across all of Africa. Stephen, very briefly, just before I say goodbye, you and I can talk all day about this, but briefly, uh, before I let you go this morning, uh, one uh, expert, one vaccinologist, uh, should be Mahdi, suggesting the rollout should have actually begun last year. Just in the last 30 seconds I have with you, is it realistic to say that the rollout should have happened last year? Hindsight, 2020, all those things. Well, your, your rollout should have happened as early as you could. But if you have a look at what happened, you know, we had the AstraZeneca's vaccines here, and then you know what happened. They actually were on our shores, and someone said, no, it doesn't work against the variant we found in South Africa. Uh, we've had some delays with J&J. &J. Of course, you want a variant before, as soon as possible. And certainly, you know, we're looking like with a, there's a risk of a third wave here. Uh, you would like to have had this a couple of months, two, three months before this potential third wave. But, you know, Gareth, we've got what we've got. We are where we are. Fingers crossed for Friday. And once Friday comes, you know, Aspen can make, uh, you know, about 25 million vaccines a month doses a month and we can really churn out and we'll, we can cover the country very quickly and, and, and also you know we've got a commitment to the rest of Africa uh, who've been very supportive of Aspen and man, Aspen manufacture but we can get there and we can roll it out for South Africa and Africa just give us we just we just need the approvals and we and we'll be we'll be churning. I know the FDA is watching the show they watch the show every day don't they uh, just waiting for the FDA approval and then it seems Aspen is going to be a company <laughs> that's going to potentially turn COVID-19 hopefully on its head here in South Africa. Stephen Saad, such a pleasure. All the best to you and your organization as we wait for the green light from the FDA to give Aspen the go-ahead. As Stephen Saad says, 25 million vaccinations in the end, uh, but they're waiting to get the green light. Open the garage doors, 2 million vaccines ready to go. Hopefully we get an answer as a country tomorrow.